So I'll be looking at the uh, trainers that I would wear for sort of springtime and uh, just doing sort of my rotation in terms of taking out sort of some of the, the winter sneakers and what I'd rock for the sort of springtime. And there's a few pairs here and they're probably like summertime as well, I guess. And uh, some of the pairs here like go from sort of budget range to sort of top of the range in terms of money. And I'll go through some of them in terms of the price range and basically start from the lowest. So this is the first pair, which is the Nike uh, Phoenix Waffle. And what I like about this pair is it looks like the sort of 80s runners from Nike. And, but it's just been given a bit of a twist. So you have this sort of chunky mid midsole, which is kind of the in thing at the moment. And uh, this, uh, I know Sakai did the LD waffles as well. And this one's got, you know, kind of those sort of vibes. It's uh, quite nice actually for 90 pounds. It's, it's definitely worth it, I think. And it's got kind of all these different sort of reflective panels on it. I think my only downside with this is the nylon sort of mesh material here. It feels really sort of rough. And then also the it's no tech in here so it's just that the the midsole is i wouldn't say it's too firm but it's obviously medium firm it feels like an air max one to me in terms of its comfort but it's pretty nice and then the next one you can probably pick these up and sell to be honest so anywhere between sort of the 70 to 100 pound mark depending on your size and this is the uh, air max 90 terrascape and what i like about these is just the kind of sort of especially with this colorway is like the neutral look of it, it you know the sea glass colorway and it's got that kind of deconstructed look where it does look like the, you know, the, the off-white version. I know the, they did like a, a version of that uh, for, for this, the MX-90, they did like an off-white version. And uh, so this is, you know, just looks like one of those sort of deconstructed shoes and worth the price for that much money. And uh, if you can find them on sale, I won't be paying sort of full retail price for these because of the materials and because they don't last that long. And that's, yeah, so that's one reason. And then the, on top of that, we've got the uh, Nike Terminator Low, if you want something of a, a leather quality. So these came out, I think, for about £110, if I remember correctly. However, on sale, you can pick them up anywhere between sort of £60 to £90, depending on your size. And with this particular one, I'd, I'd definitely go for the Black Phantom one. Reason being, it comes with better leather quality, as you can probably see here. It's got nicer sort of leather quality on here. And then also the fact that it's got a leather lining and then the insole as well is a lot nicer than the normal versions. This is this is actually called, I think, Black Phantom Premium. So I definitely recommend this. And then one of the sort of distant cousins is the uh, Alpha Force, uh, a pair that was worn by Michael Jordan. And basically, I think this pair is really underrated. It's got the similar sort of uh, midsole to the Jordan 3. And in that respect, it feels as comfortable as those. And I think you can't go wrong with this pair, especially when you put them on foot. They may not look that nice looking at them like this. However, when you put them on foot, they look really nice. And like I say, they feel very comfortable as well because they've got a really sort of wide toe box and you can do a comparison with like a, a Terminator low. And then this one's definitely sort of wider, you know, so. And it's just a cool pair. You can find them, like I say, for quite cheap, especially like the red colorway. And then the next one after that, I would sort of say it's the uh, gel uh, 1130 from Asics. And these ones are really comfortable. I find them really sort of soft on foot. And obviously this one's a collab one, which is a Hal Studios collab, but you can pick these up on sale as well, anywhere between sort of the 60 to the retail price of 95 pounds. So there's loads of different colorways in this as well. And if you're looking for a soft, uh, comfortable sneaker for the springtime and breathable, then you can't go wrong with a pair of these. And uh, ASICs are really good with the manufacturing process. And then after that, I'll probably look at kind of an AMX one. And there's, they, they release so many of these and not just this H6 model, but just in general, like there's so many different uh, AMX ones out there that you can grab a pair, of, which I've seen anywhere between sort of 70 to, you know, the retail price of 135 pounds. But if you're, you know, depending on what size you're looking for, you might find it, you know, that you're probably looking to pay anywhere between like I say, 70 to 100 pound on the resale market or picking one up on sale. And it doesn't need to be this particular model. There's like so many other models out there that are going on sale. And uh, Nike did release a ton of them over the last 12 months. And I think they'll probably end up slowing down because a lot of them seem to be on sale. And then after that, I'd probably look at something like this where you've got the A6 GT2160. 
This particular sneaker I don't find as comfortable as the 1130 and also the Kayanos or the Gel NYCs. And out of the A6 models, this is probably the one that I'd least recommend. But it just depends on what you like really. This one has more of a firmer feel on foot and also has more of a, I think, nicer sort of look to it because of the panels. It's kind of got the classic sort of runner sneaker vibes to it as well. Uh, this one being the collab, the Kogarashi collab, but you can pick up the standard sort of versions um, anywhere between you know the 90 to 110 pound mark again depending on size but it's a nice nice shoe if you prefer more of a firm feel and then the next one after that is the uh, Yeezy 350 compact and I think these are really really comfortable uh, especially sort of the upper it being this sort of soft knitted material kind of reminds me of the 350 v1 and uh, basically these you can pick up on sale as well depending on the colorway you can get anywhere between sort of the 100 to the 150 pound mark on the resale market i think i picked these this particular pair up for 110 which i was happy to pay and uh, it's a, a cool pair to have and like i say it keeps you warm enough during the springtime but also have that breathability as well at the same time and feeling comfortable on foot and then you kind of move up the price range slightly so at this point i'd be sort of recommending a jordan one really so you can't go wrong obviously with a black toe but there's so many other Jordan 1 lows out and again you can pick them up on resale depending on the colorway some go for even sort of 70 80 pounds and you know upwards so just depends on which one you want obviously going for a classic color like this you might be paying a little bit more but there are other pairs out there such as the atmosphere gray for example which goes for very low money and uh, just depends on what you're looking for the comfort on this is going to be the same as all the other sort of basketball trainers like it's okay it's fine and it's very sort of neutral on foot but it's still a very cool looking sneaker and then you kind of move up into the price range slightly so to around the 140 170 pound marks and at this point i'd pull out the my one of my favorites is the uh, 1906 r and uh, this this model just feels really nice on foot very sort of neutral very sort of soft and plush at the same time and it's very breathable at the same time as well and if you don't like the look of the 1906 r there's two other pairs that use the same midsole tech which is, and give you the same sort of comfort, which is the 2002R and the 860 V2. So any of those pairs that you like, you can, can't go wrong. I, I really like the aesthetics of this with the, the sort of more angular lines on it, but some people may prefer sort of the curvy lines of the 2002R or the 860 V2. And then you've got the Kayanos after this, which are priced around the sort of 155 pound mark. And these are the uh, Gel Kayano uh, 14s. And I find these nice and uh, quite comfortable on foot. And I, I tend to go true to size in these versus some of the other pairs that I tend to go up half size. However, what I would say, they're more on the sort of medium, almost going towards the firm side. I think this gel technology that they have isn't as soft as the 1130s, but they're more comfortable than a 2160. So it just depends on what you're looking for. I think they're, they're still comfortable, don't get me wrong. And I, you know, out of the pairs that I've got, I think I'd still probably choose like the 1906R over this one. Uh, but the Kayano is still nice. It's still sort of recommended and I still think it's a cool looking sneaker and just depends on what you like really. I, I prefer the the styling of the New Balance sneakers. And then if you're a, a Nike fanboy, then you probably go for something like the Vomero. And this is another one which is really comfortable on foot as well. It's uh, slightly, I think less so than the 1906 in my opinion, but everyone's different. But it's still very, very comfortable. It's all nuances really. I think anyone between the Kayano 14 the Vomero and the 1906R, whichever one sort of you like and sort of speaks to you, 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 might, you can't go wrong really. Uh, however, I would say try and pick them up on sale because I think pay, paying full retail for them is a, a bit too much uh, for what you get. And then moving up the line a little bit, uh, you get the Gel NYC and these sort of retail, I think around the sort of 155 pound mark. However, this is the collab version. So this is the hidden uh, New York, but this was retailing at 165 uh, as far as I remember, which is probably like a 10 15 pound more than what they are. But this one I find very comfortable on foot. It's probably similar to the 1906R, in my opinion, and it's more on the sort of soft medium side. And uh, what I will say is, some people probably don't like the silhouette and the aesthetics of this particular pair, but I, I do like it. I think it's really nice. I, I think it's really cool, especially this hidden New York one. Um, but some of the other pairs I've seen, they look a bit more aggressive, and it just depends on what colorway you get.
And then uh, I kind of move on to more of the hype stuff, really. And I think at this point, I'd be looking at sort of wearing something like this, which is a campus. It's quite sort of heavy on foot. But the Bad Bunny campus, it's just a cool looking shoe, in my opinion. Uh, I don't really like wearing those sort of standard uh, campus gazelles, you know, uh, or the sambas, really. I don't really get on with them, and I don't, don't find them that appealing to wear. They just feel very sort of mid to me personally. Uh, but more power to you if you you know if you feel like they work for you. But for me, I prefer sort of wearing something like this. And these aren't too bad on the resale market either. So this campus or their forums by Bad Bunny, I think they look really cool because they have like the double tongue and uh, you know the double collar on the heel. And they have also just really cool colorways. And this is like the olive pair, for example. My only sort of gripe with these is they just feel a bit heavy on foot and. They're a good one for sort of, like I say, springtime, but I'd probably sort of stop wearing them summertime and pull them out again for the autumn, winter time. And then I'd probably look at something like a, an Air Max Plus. And these retail for quite a lot of money, but if you can pick up on sale, then obviously good. But they do sell out very fast, especially here in the UK. But an Air Max Plus is a sort of tried and tested uh, sneaker. And they have very cool aesthetics, especially if you're like looking for something which is a bit more loud. And they tend to have sort of loud colorways. And you also do get ones with like black and white on them but i highly recommend this particular pair i think it's really cool and really nice and just makes it sort of it's just one of those sneakers that just you put on foot and you just feel you know that you, you've got something really nice on foot and nowadays it's probably not the most comfortable but i still find them like passable and probably even more comfortable than the gt2160 in my opinion but just depends on what you like and you know what, what works for you in terms of your comfort but this is a cool pair, but it goes up in the price range and these retail I think anywhere between sort of 170, 108 pounds and maybe on the resale market. And then after that, you get into more of the more expensive trainers. So I think a 991 V2, this particular one feels very, very nice and for, and very sort of comfortable. And it's quite sort of on the sort of soft medium side in my opinion. And the fuel cell in this particular pair makes it nice and easy to sort of walk around and the materials they use in this is just on, a, on another level in my opinion and they just feel very sort of easy to wear and it feels like you're wearing a pair of slippers and then after that i would like look at something like the uh, 990 v6 this one i picked up on sale and i paid i think it was 90 pounds um but if you can pick them up for sort of that price range at sort of 90 to 130 pounds i don't think they sold at the full retail price so that well so i think you can pick them up on sale just depends on the colorway but this one i really really love the colorway of this and if you pick it up for sort of i've seen it sort of anywhere between the 90 to 130 pound mark and again it depends on the size but uh it's a very cool sneaker if you can get it up for a good price but otherwise it's sort of 220 pounds but i don't know if i'd pay 220 pounds even though i think it's a very very nice and comfortable sneaker i think 220 for me is just a bit too much and then on top of that, I think I'll be busting out this particular pair, which is the uh, Travis Scott Air Max one. And I really like the way this sneaker looks is because of the fact that it's got a nice sort of this sort of pattern on there, just these beads that they've got on the swoosh, just sort of knitted in, stitched in. And then it just looks different to a, a standard Air Max one with a sort of blacked out airbag and just enough sort of details on this. And then I think the colorway is quite sort of unique as well. So if you're looking for a sort of hype pair, then you could probably pick out any Air Max one in terms of collabs, so even like the Concepts pack or you know one of the other sort of ones where you got the Air Max sort of skunk or uh, Safari for example, they're all quite cool and different. And if you want to really really splash out then maybe go for something like a Born and Raised SB Dunk and basically this pair is uh, just a very cool pair to wear especially during sort of springtime is perfect you know and uh, the blue and white colorway and the, the reflective hits on there just really sort of stand out in the sun so it's a, it's a perfect pair to wear that at that time but those are sort of my recommendations for the springtime